Are you tired of your kitchen looking dull and uninspiring? Would you like to fix it but are intimidated by the cost? In today's video, I'm going to show you 12 easy hacks I use to make our rental kitchen look expensive on a budget. These hacks are simple, affordable, and will completely transform the look of your kitchen. I mean, ours used to look like this. But now, it looks like this. The first thing I did is I gave myself time. I mean, we've lived in this house for one and a half years now, and you can bet the first day I walked into this house, I was like, uh-uh, this kitchen is not my ideal kitchen. Problem, the kitchen is a bit dark. <laughs> is fantastic yeah that's not bad and then it's open plan hmm. wait hey okay however i was willing to wait to save money and to not give myself pressure to have the kitchen looking like my dream kitchen immediately. So I highly suggest just give yourself some time and then, you know, don't put, don't put yourself under pressure and then eventually you will get there. All right, guys, come for peanuts. The second thing I did is I did my research because you know it's one thing to know that you want your kitchen made over and it's another thing to know exactly how you want it made over. So during that time as I was waiting I was going on Pinterest, I was looking everywhere, I was watching YouTube videos, I was screenshotting. I literally have a page on my Pinterest called Kitchen Makeover and I would pin everything that I thought would look nice in my kitchen. So that's what I would suggest you do. And then also when you're looking for ways to make your kitchen look nice and doing your research, also research for cheaper alternatives because someone somewhere out there has made a kitchen that looks exactly the, like what you want yours to look like and they have done it on a budget like here. The third thing I did to make our kitchen look expensive, which you can do even today, is to clear our countertops. I removed all our electronics from the countertops that I could move away. Well, apart from the microwave, it's the one thing I couldn't fit inside the cabinet. But everything else from blenders to food processors to kettles, every time we are not using them, we make sure we put them away because a clear countertop looks so much better as opposed to one that is cluttered by electronics that you only use like once a week or once every other week so we use them and then we put them away this will really transform your kitchen tip number four is that i went shopping in all the right places i'm telling you with a bit of research you will realize there are many places where you can buy affordable decor pieces for instance we went to oka deco where we bought these fantastic paintings let me show you like if you watch the kitchen makeover video, which I'm going to link here, these paintings, we bought them at Okadeko for only 1,600 shillings. That's literally like $12 at this point in our country. And we also went to Kamukunji. You see, you have to be willing to walk around and also to bargain for prices. So we went to Kamukunji. We also went to Stage Market where we bought some of the greenery. Basically, don't just buy stuff from wherever make sure you do your research we bought some stuff from instagram we also bought some stickers the stickers on the jars on instagram so find the cheapest place to buy what you need to buy before you actually make a purchase oh i almost forgot to mention these lovely curtains that we also bought from isali yes we went all the way went through all the shops so as i said Look for the cheapest places to buy what you need to buy before you actually make a purchase. Tip number five is I look for temporary, effective and affordable ways to change the color of the kitchen. Because you know one of the first things we all want to do, especially if you move into a house and the cabinets are that hideous brown color, is you want to change the color. Now our cabinets were covered with MDF, which means we couldn't paint. 
So what we did is we got contact paper and this part is tile and this part is concrete wall. So what we did is we covered it all in contact paper. It was cheaper, it's temporary because this is a rental and it was faster and we're able to get the color that we want. Tip number six is I hid what I couldn't control. Like if you look at our old kitchen videos, this place was made of glass so you could see exactly what was inside. And it was so much pressure to just make the inside look nice because it was visible. So what we did when we were doing the makeover is instead of worrying about how to arrange all that stuff, we put black contact paper. We completely covered what was inside. So now the kitchen looks so much better. It looks so much neater. I don't have to worry about arranging the stuff in the cabinet. And it was so simple. Tip number seven is I knew what to splurge on and what to save on. For instance, we really wanted floating shelves and we wanted these glass containers because they look really nice. But these, these were an expensive purchase. Installing the floating shelf was an expensive purchase uh, together with them, together with the glass jars. However, they made such a big difference to how the kitchen looked. The whole look of the kitchen was, you know, sort of anchored on these ones. So we decided that it's something we could afford to splurge on. Now where we saved was on the floor. So on the floor, we decided instead of getting like some huge carpet or just changing the tiles, we got someone to come and polish the tiles that are already there and also to regrout the tiles. And I'm going to just put the contacts of these guys down below so that you, if you want to just engage them in some services, you can do that. And speaking of service provider, that is my tip number eight is I looked for affordable service providers. I asked around, I compared prices. I didn't just go with the first service provider that I found. Well, granted, when, it, <laughs> when we were putting the, the, what, the contact paper, the person we started with um, sort of like jumped ship at some point and their work was not as good quality. However, we did end up with a really nice person who was, in my opinion, much more affordable than some people I had found on the Instagram. So I'm just saying, ask around. Don't just go with the first person, okay? I mean, it saved us uh, quite a few thousands of shillings. Tip number nine is we worked with what we had when it came to decor pieces. I mean, a few things we bought, but Agatha, who is an amazing interior designer that we worked with, is a fellow YouTuber as well. You can check out her channel. Agatha was really keen on us using what we had. So for instance, if you look at this top shelf, we didn't buy any of these decor pieces. We had all of this, including the wooden pieces on the sides, because this one we had already bought from Mahometic Furniture, and they worked so well with the theme that we had on going. So all I'm saying is look around your house, see what you have, see what you can repurpose, what you can move from another room to come into your kitchen and basically to any room that you want to decorate before you go and buy everything else that is new and find that you still had some stuff in your house that could have been repurposed, you know? Tip number 10, and this maybe should have come a bit earlier, is that I knew my season and I was content. Let me give an example. We have four kids and the oldest right now is eight. So when they were a bit younger, you know toddlers and you have toddlers in the house and everything. So this is the type of, this is the container that I used to use for our cooking oil. And a couple of people asked me where we bought this. This is just a ketchup bottle. You can find this at Kamukunji or even at Kafu or any supermarket. And I like it because it has a small nozzle and this is what we used to use to, to just measure how much oil we're cooking with. So this worked when the kids were smaller because there is no way this would have survived <laughs> back when they had kids. I mean, the kids were all over and they were younger and they couldn't understand the concept of this is fragile, be careful. But now they can and now I can afford to have 
a bit more glass around them without worrying because you, you know with kids just avoid avoid fight if you can so i'd say if your kids are younger and you just want you love your peace just be content where you are and to have unbreakable things and then as they grow older then you can you can just maybe now get a few more pretty looking and fragile pieces and it is okay to be patient until that season comes to an end because it does and so for me my season of this was over and now i'm in a season of this tip number 11 which again we learned from agatha to make your kitchen look more expensive on a budget is to add greenery now as you can see we really took that to heart and we just added a bit of four flowers quite a good number of them because we just felt like it brings the whole place you know it makes it come alive it makes it look nice it's affordable most of this we actually bought from stage market but a few we bought from Oka Deco and it really just makes the place look so much better and also because our palette was mostly white it was more of a nordic theme the green really just complemented it and i'm so glad that you have stayed here up to this point of the video because that's so kind of you and for me tip number 12 as far as flowers are concerned is to go with live flowers i mean we have a lot of four flowers here but normally we like to have like a big bouquet of live flowers like right here but they just died guys and i just threw them out like a few hours ago but they really liven up the place and now if you want to play around with color that's where you can bring in like like splashes of color so to see all these tips in action you want to watch this video here that shows you exactly how we transformed this kitchen and i'll see you over there <laughs>